just thought I'd talk a little bit about fibromyalgia today. There are so many videos on YouTube about people and their experiences with fibromyalgia. Well, I went from being um, just a go, 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 go person. Never could sit still. To my detriment, I mean, I should have, you know, to enjoy people and their company a little more. But I was just, just the way I was. I, I just went all the time. And uh, just full of energy. I did so much, you know, for myself and my own household and many others. Um, so, and I also was uh, had my own business of cleaning houses at the time. And that is really hard physical work, and I enjoyed it. You know, sometimes doing mostly, most of the time, cleaning two houses a day, many times three, um, every single day, you know. But uh, it just got, it, it started out for me with um, nausea, awful nausea. Like, if you've ever had a child and had the morning sickness, it was like the nausea of a uh, morning sickness type of thing. And it was just constant for no rhyme or reason for me, you know. And it was just something that I learned to live with, you know. And um, eventually I, I did get um, Zofran or something, you know, for nausea. And found out that the ginger chews, little ginger chew candies that you can get at uh, GNC really helped. They helped a little bit. They helped a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, for months, I'd say about six months with the nausea. And when you're a 40-year-old woman and you have nausea, um, <laughs> you know, people think the worst. Doctors think, you know, the worst with nausea and sickness. I got to wear was losing my appetite. Didn't have no appetite for nothing. Just no desire for food. And so I wasn't eating right at all. Um, let's see. That rolled over into energy. Went downhill. I mean to tell you, it was unlike your most exhausting day you could imagine. Um, it was unlike that. It was um, just didn't have the motivation or the ability to get up and do anything. You know, I remember uh, at that time I would eat ice cream. That was the easiest for me to eat when I lost the appetite. And, you know, it got so where I had to give up a cleaning business. I couldn't do that anymore. And I was just pretty much down to in a chair, you know. Just to sit up in that chair took a lot. Um, but when I would eat ice cream, I had a bowl of ice cream. I would set it on a pillow in my chair here in front of me. And just to pick the spoon up with that ice cream in it from the bowl to my mouth required so much energy. It just wore me out. I have to rest my hand a while before I'd bring up another bite. Two, because my arms were feeling like they weighed five, ten, fifteen pounds each, just so heavy. But anyway, so yeah, the energy, and I was given B12 shots for a while because my B12 was low, but in <clears throat> vitamin D. But uh, the thing about it. And I think I went a good year and a half before, and I saw every specialist that there was to see. And just in case anybody's going through that, maybe you don't come down by having fibromyalgia or something else, but that is a very hard thing to go through, is seeing specialist after specialist after specialist, hoping somebody can give you an answer of what's going on, because really I was starting to feel like I was crazy. And making all this up in my mind. Um, but the blood test. You know, all the blood tests they take. And nerve conduction studies. To bone density scans. To ultrasounds. CT scans. You name it. 
you know, would just come back fine. And it was, I felt so bad to admit that I wish something would come back showing something. Because to me, that would be better than not having any diagnosis. I was willing to accept anything, really. You know, just to have something that I could say was causing this in me. Um, so anyways, yeah, uh, let's say the energy was, like I said, so terrible. Um, sleeplessness, insomnia. I would dread time to go to bed, you know. Because how many nights did I lay in my bedroom, in my bed, while my husband was sleeping and stare at the walls because I'd have a little candle going. You know, I just couldn't sleep. I could not sleep. And I just dreaded time to go to bed. Um, that came with it. They call it fibro fog. And, um, truly, it is like a fog. Um, my words wouldn't even come out right like they should, you know. I'd, I couldn't, it was just, keeping up with the date was something else kind of hard chore for me. Keeping up with what day it was. Um, and, like my medicines, it got down to my husband helped me to take my medicines. Because I, I might take them twice or not take them at all. And just could not remember, it was just a big chore to take the medicines um, once I started getting treated with medicines. But, <clears throat> let's say anything else. I guarantee I'm forgetting something. Guarantee it. But now, to the point now, it's been right at two years, I'd say. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe a little more. And, you know, it's a new normal for me, like the doctor was saying. It's good not to compare the way I am now to how I was, because this is my new normal. Um, I've done a lot of research. Um, I've kind of experimented with it myself, you know. I know that diet, they say diet has a lot to do with it, gluten-free and all this. They say leaky guts associated with fibromyalgia. Um, so many different things people say. And it's taken me a while to pick up on the up and down, the ebb and flow of it. Because it truly does, um, you know, say lie dormant. And then there'll just be these little signs that'll come. Nausea being one of the big ones. Get a little nauseous. Little signs um, that you're getting ready to go into a flare-up. And for me, you know, they could last two, three months, six months at a time, you know. Um, but once they started treating me with, and I'll say this, they treat fibromyalgia with antidepressant medications a lot of the times. They're also uh, sometimes steroid injections, which I don't like because it puffs me up. But... The antidepressants, and I will just share, just in case it could help somebody, those things are potent. You know, you can't just, well, this ain't working, I'm going to quit taking it. One time I did that, and I, I thought I was going to die. Um, you got to take it like it's prescribed. But Savella, S-A-V-E-L-L-A, -L -L -A, Savella, it's a fairly new medication, maybe nine or ten years on the market. I don't think they have a generic for it yet. But um, that, is, that helped. That has helped me. And, and this last time, I've went almost a whole year without a huge flare-up that really knocked me down, you know. I might not have a lot of energy in this and that, but as far as, um, like right now, I am in a flare-up. Um, they say different things can trigger a flare-up. You know, that's something that you can keep up with and try to keep tabs on. Um, but, you know, just to rest my arm here on the armrest in the car hurts. You know, I all the time wear my clothes inside out. 
while I'm at home. If I go out in public, I can't. So this is inside out. The reason being my pants, everything, is because the tag that's on the inside of the clothes, very irritating and just uncomfortable for me. It can hurt your skin. One thing, too, that I would suggest for somebody is get one of these. You know, I always get to times where I couldn't drive. You know, I couldn't drive. But this right here, oh, that feels so good, you know, compared to this seatbelt. It hurts. You know, and I've even got a note from my doctor saying that uh, I have to have this, you know, or I'm not going to wear my seatbelt. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. But I feel like a, I don't think I've ever been stung by a jellyfish, but I can I read reports on it and watch videos. But I'd say I feel like a jellyfish has just slid down my entire body and stung it. You know, it feels burnt, carpet burnt like. Very sensitive, even shaving my legs. If you get the goosebumps, <clears throat> you know, in a goosebump, you, your skin. Looks like chicken skin, and the little goose bump comes up, and the hair, if you need to shave, will stick out of that um, little bump, goose bumps. When I'd go to shave, that can feel like getting the goose bumps. It can feel like shards of glass all stuck into your leg. Mine did. Um, just to talk, my mouth going up and down like that can make me feel tired, make my jaw feel wore out. Um, let's see. Just everything feels heavy on my body. You know, I, sitting in doctor's office holding a magazine, I'd have to lay it down here on my lap, rest my arms to look at it. It just wear me out to hold a magazine and flip through it. it makes you real tired, you know. So, those are just a few things that I could share about the fibromyalgia, you know. Of course, I didn't necessarily believe it. You hear a lot that, oh, that's not a real thing, and they say that, uh, everybody's telling me, well, hmm, that's what they say's wrong with you when they can't figure out what's wrong with you. And, uh, but, like I said, it's just a... I believe it is a real thing, you know, and um, a lot of the symptoms and things I've looked up, sure enough, they fit me, you know, they do. So that's just a few things about my fibromyalgia. If anybody had any more questions or anything, if I could think of anything that would help somebody else going through it, I sure would share it. So if anybody sees this, has any questions or Anything they want to share, please comment on this video. I'd like to know about it. Like I said, I'm fairly new to fibromyalgia a couple of years. And only known about it, been diagnosed for about a year now. So it completely changed the pace of my life. You know, I was full speed ahead and now I feel like, you know, I might know what it's like to be a 80-some-year-old woman maybe that can't go anymore and can't do, you know, feels like it's aged me for sure, but, um, I hope that can help somebody, and I'd be very interested in fine with, uh, conversing back and forth with someone, so, talk to you later, bye-bye, have a good one.